A very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to ULAW's uh, webinar. Um, we're going to be discussing a couple of topics today. Uh, I believe it's a one hour, 45 minute session. Uh, we have uh, a set of topics to be discussed on everything practice management. Uh, and uh, the second set of topics that we're going to be discussing on is uh, law society compliances. So uh, both go hand in hand. Uh, we're going to see as a, a legal practitioner, what are the things that you need to keep in mind um, while practicing, of course, uh, um, you know, being uh, compliant with law society is one of the top priorities, but at the same time, fulfilling your obligations uh, right from the beginning is uh, another thing. So right, when I mean right from the beginning, from the time you start the practice, um, it's going to be very important to keep these things in mind. So let me go over the slides for um for a few minutes. I'm not going to take too much of time, but um, let's kind of cover the basics and then we can jump into you law to see how everything works. I'm sure all of you have your own uh, account with uh, you law practice. Um, this could be helpful for you to get back and uh, practice at your end. Of course, um, Catherine would be uh, giving you all of those, um, you know, um, things to work on, but at the same time, I'm going to walk you through a few examples today on um, you log on as well. Um, if any of you at any point in time uh, find it hard to hear me, uh, please do let me know on the chat window. Um, raise your questions on the chat window and I'll try to pause and take it. I do have some sore throat, so you might probably hear me coughing at times, so please ignore that. And uh, I've uh, muted all of you for a particular reason because the session's being recorded. Uh, the recording will be available to you probably in a couple of days. Uh, any questions, feel free to put it on the chat window. Thank you. All right, now. Uh, there are a few things as part of everything practice management that um, is very important uh, for us to, you know, kind of pay attention to, especially when you're uh, beginning to, or when you're thinking about even starting practice. Uh, so I would, I would say starting off with uh, your client intake service communication. As uh, that is one of the first point of contact being with your client. What are the things that you have to keep in mind uh, to fulfill as you know professional obligation, as well as uh, maintain uh, the service and communication with your client, and have the file management in place because of course you need to make sure. They are in order uh, in accordance with law society. Having um, said that, you know you have a you maintain a file number, you maintain uh, the records, um, you know the you know the photo IDs of your client. There's so many things that you might have to gather as part of uh, you know client intake service and communication that also falls part of file management which in turn develops into financial management because obviously you'll be raising invoices, you will be uh, docketing your client, you will be uh, incurring disbursements which you have to maintain in the file. And, um, um, you know, why are we maintaining all this, first of all, which is where it's going to lead to the second part of the, today's webinar, which is law society compliances. So, um, Financial management, file management, all of these can be done in any way possible. But there are certain restrictions, there are certain obligations to be fulfilled, um, which is what we're going to discuss today as part of the subheaders you're seeing here, which is file management, financial management, business management, professional time management, personal management. They are, these are split into like about seven subtopics of today's session, first part of today's session. And um, my emphasis would definitely be more on 
client intake service communication, file management, financial management, and a little bit of business management. Of course, the professional time and personal management, they all come with the role, but um, my focus will be on the first five subheadings that you're seeing here, or rather first four. And um, starting off with client intake service and communication. Now, this is something that is really very um, interesting, I would say. Um, now, anyone could do a client intake. You can do it yourself. You might have an assistant doing it, but you will have to set a method or set a procedure in which you want to follow and you want to, um, you know, continue in taking your clients. You don't want you want to make it consistent. So, maybe something that you would do a traditional tape of in method, or you want to do an online intake where you send your client a link if you're using ULaw, you have a client intake form that you can send them or, or through email and ask them to fill it out, submit it online. They, everything is totally become online today with virtual, with all of those that's happening on the, you know, especially after the COVID era. So we're all trying to, uh, you know, keep things online. And um, we also have the conflict checking that needs to be done uh, post the time where you intake the client. The first thing that comes to um, being, you know, compliant with law society is completing the conflict check. Now, only if you do the conflict check in your into your in your system, you're going to be aware whether there's any conflict or not and you can decide whether to proceed further or not with this particular client. So please keep in mind, upon in taking a client conflict check, very important. If it is positive, you proceed. If it's negative, you can provide them with a non-engagement letter. And when it's positive, when you proceed, this is where you determine what type of um, client is this maybe are you going to work on work based on retainer are you going to work based on fee um you know maybe when i say fees um you know you're going to collect the fee later or you're going to work based on retainer once you decide all of this you can you'll be able to then draft a retainer letter now if you're using ulaw you can use ulaw's retainer letter they're all completely aligned with law society compliances again so you could definitely use that. And um, once that's done, you also have, um, you know, the engagement letter that talks about uh, duties and the scope and responsibilities of both you and your client. Sorry about that. I think I muted myself by mistake. <clears throat> yeah, so we're talking about the retainer agreement here. So upon in taking a client, once you're done with the conflict check and determining the fee and other, <clears throat> you know, uh, trust account agreements that you're going to provide with, one of them is definitely a retainer agreement. You're going to talk about nature and scope of matter, client responsibilities, scheduling appointments, any representations, the method of communication, how frequently you'd like to communicate with them.
Once again, I'm so sorry. Uh, give me one moment, guys. There's some issue with my audio. Can you give me a minute? Is it better now? Can you all hear me now? All right. Thank you. Sorry, there's some issue with the audio I reconnected. All right. All right. So we were discussing about the retainer agreement um, and the, the topics that you need to cover in there. So it definitely requires a lot of your attention to the responsibilities of both you and your client and the method you'd like to communicate with them and other retainer arrangements. Uh, I'm not stressing too much upon it because you already have uh, a retainer agreement in place. You already would like to probably take a look at the example under a matter under compliances, you would find a retainer agreement. Going further into file management where, you know, when you have a client and take done, you have completed the conflict check, you have um, you have got the retainer agreement signed, you've collected the retainer agreement, you've collected the retainer as the retainer agreement. Now you have you are probably about to start the work where you have a file to be managed. Now you need to make sure the file checklist is in place. That's one of the first things that you might want to do. Have the conflict check completed put that into the file, make sure you have respective file numbers for the respective matters. The same client could come to you for two different matters. Make sure you separate them. You don't want to mix them. You don't want to confuse them. Even though they're same clients, you cannot have the same file numbers for different matters. So make sure they're all in order in place, chronologically secured. The organization of files are very important, especially these days, everything being electronic. Make sure you don't lose any data, but at the same time, you are you know, securing them for your future use too. And more than that, uh, cross-indexing of numbers is very important. Um, you want to make sure that they are organized well in um, you know, reach for you all. And um, once the file is in place, you've started the work, um, you've gotten the retainer, you are now beginning to docket your client. You're invoicing the client. Um, the next thing you want to do is, may, uh, you know, take the money from trust into the general. So for which, um, so you need to raise an invoice. Only upon raising an invoice, you can move the money, whatever is lying in the trust, and make it yours by moving it into the general. Now for that, you need to make sure you're recording the hours properly for the docket. Hourly rates are recorded. And um, you're raising invoice, not only that you're raising the invoice, but you're also transferring the invoice from trust to the general. Upon transferring the invoice from trust, uh, sorry, up, um, you're delivering the invoice to the client and then transferring the funds from trust to the general. That is one of the important things to note down when you are doing a trust transfer. Nobody wants to, especially law society, doesn't want you to transfer money from trust to the general. Uh, without delivering an invoice to the client. Once the invoice is done, delivered to the client, you have money lying in trust, and you collect, the, then you move the money from trust to the general. Now, let's say you don't have trust account or you don't have the money in trust account for this particular client, then you're going to deliver the invoice to them, and they're going to pay you into the general account directly, which is called as client payment. Upon completing that, you're you're now able to systematically track all payments so you know whether if there's any overpayment or any underpaid uh, invoice and you're able to also record the general accounts through general receipts and disbursement entries all of them recorded under one invoice and um, you know the respective journals and ledgers are also seen now 
that general uh, journals and ledgers, what we're going to be probably discussing in the part two, which is uh, law society compliances, but tracking of receipts, invoices, overpayments, um, and uh, maintaining the bank statements with the books of accounts, uh, ensuring they are similar, cancel checks, any duplicate deposit slips, all of them under one place. And uh, we need to also make sure that uh, every now and then, these are not just done for law society's sake. These are done for your own um, you know, benefit too, which is where if you're um, practicing on your own, you need to maintain your financial statements um, and especially profit and loss um, and uh, balance sheets and other things that financials that you want to, you might want to, you know, uh, put in place to guard your firm's health. Just making sure that um, everything is in order and you're, in, you know, things are under control. And that's one of the major things that you want to make sure you're aware of. With keeping in mind financial management, of course, you have um, various ledgers, journals. Uh, bank reconciliations, comparisons with previous quarter, current quarter, all of these falls under financial. So when you are when you are talking about financial management, you want to make sure that it's end-to-end, -end, right from the time you uh, bring in money to the time you disperse it. Everything is completely, you know, um, captured into the books and um, relatively, entered into the respective ledgers and journals, which in turn um, is recorded into the uh, Law Society Compliance Reports. Moving further into professional management, like I said, um, professional management, something that is also emphasized by Law Society, um, you know, you need to make sure you're covering your CPD hours, you're covering your um, uh, required amount of CPD hours every year, and um, you're you're paying the membership fee to your associations on a regular basis. You're reviewing the case laws, legislation, and professional conduct guidelines from time to time. So all of these form part of um, your professional management and uh, time management. Of course, you have maintenance of a to-do list, maintenance of active lists active files, non-billable time. Now, to-do list and active files, what does this mean? Um, now, let's say you're a sole practitioner, you're a small business owner, you're, you, you're trying to do things on your own. You don't want to miss out on um, upcoming hearing. You don't want to miss out on, um, you know, even a simple task for which you would want to maintain a to-do list. Active files, um, is nothing but when you have a set of files uh, at the same time, you're not aware which one is open, which one is closed, active, inactive. For that reason, uh, it's best that every time you close a file, you mark it as closed so that your concentration on active files is uh, going to be uh, undivided, so, which is easier for you to pay attention to the ones that's over open or not closed. And um, last but not the least, uh, non-billable time docket. So now it's not always billable time dockets, like you know, you're billing uh, for a client. And most of the times non-billable like pro bono cases or when you are working for your own self or for somebody that you know where you're not even raising an invoice, but you still want to dock it for the work that you've done, you can always enter it as a non-billable hour. So that way, um, you can do a non-billable. Uh, there's a report that Law Society would like to see on the hours you have spent for non-billable um, time. So that's one of the reasons why we have um, a separate calculator for non-billable time too in new law. So if you're seeing all of these three as part of time management to enhance your time management, to enhance things better at your end, we have to do tasks available under each matter and um, you have active files or inactive you can mark it as and you log in and lastly for non-billable time as well you can 
plot a report as pro bono report to submit to law society in case you're asked to. So these are things um, as part of time management. And um, moving on to, I would say more about calendar management, uh, keeping yourself about um, personal calendars and your official calendar, syncing them, having a daily view and monthly view, basically being on top of your calendar, especially after it's synced. And uh, also that you can use a scratch pad from the calendar so that you can, you know, dock it as and when you work on the calendar into the matter directly. So that way it saves you more time. So both time management and calendar management hand goes hand in hand. Try to use your calendar more um, wisely by connecting them by directly inputting into calendar so that way it's on your matter as well as on your calendar. Now, if you're not aware about this particular, you know, uh, feature, I can show you when we are on the UBA program. So you can directly enter into calendar, which will show up on the matter later. Now, why all this in place of, you know, a simple accounting and, you know, practice management, why uh, bring in such things? But I would like to say, if you're trying to do these things on your own without a software, it's going to be much more complicated. Um, I, I don't know if you are aware of the jargons, if you're really, if you have the time, that kind of time to sit and do the ledgers, the journals, uh, integrating, uh, you know, various things manually. Over here, you have a seamless integration of accounting. You enter things in the matter, it will show up in the accounting. You enter things in the accounting, it will show up in the matter, if they are related, of course. If you want to enter something that's business related, that doesn't show up on your matter. But if it's something to do with the disbursements, then it will show up in both matter and accounts. Now, it's such a powerful tool that you're also able to uh, do your client work, you're able to do what you want to do for your business, you're able to an do analysis, you're also being able to submit compliance reports to Law Society, which is most important of all. And that's probably one of the reasons why uh, you have to use a program like U Law. So you could, you know, you could, you can probably <clears throat> work on it at any time to create more reports and to be compliant with law society at the same time. I'm going to walk you all through whatever we discussed in um, your law so that you could definitely go and start practicing things that you're in. Um, let me take you all to my playground account. All right, so this is my playground account. Um, I want to start off with an example. I want to take one example and show you all everything under one. So right from time I create a client to opening a matter and docketing, I also want to show how you can invoice the client, including disbursements and legal fee, how you could, um, you know, maybe uh, raise an invoice completed to a trust transfer, and if there's any client payment you want to directly receive into a general account, I can show you that as well. And um, I also want to show you a little bit of calendaring and uh, other tools and accounts for business management expenses. All right, so this is what I'm going to do end to end. Um, now, as you all know, this is the playground account. Um, ULaw is a cloud-based program, so you don't have to worry about technically sticking to one particular system. So you, as long as you know your user ID password, you can log in from anywhere. Now, if you're someone who uses mobile apps, download mobile app, you can also partially work from, work on your mobile. But uh, for now, um, yeah, this is gonna be where I'm gonna show you everything. Contacts, um, now dashboard is something with, where you get to see all of your recent activities, but contacts is technically where you start off with your work. Uh, Let's say you're adding a new client. Um, 
Now, there are different ways. Like I said, you can add a new client and new law. You can manually add it by simply clicking on add new client and enter the information yourself manually over here. Based on what the client has provided you, maybe using their driver's license or they sent you a manual form that you have at you in front of you. You can do it and you fill out this one here. This is a little old school method. I call it a little old school method, but a lot of them still follow this because they are, it's more convenient for them to do it at their own pace. Or the next, um, probably the next thing that will uh, make more sense to you for doing it is to generate a document called um, client intake form and send it to your client, ask them to fill out this form send it back to you, and then you can upload into ULA and you'll automatically see all the information in form of the client intake form uploaded into ULA. Okay, so let's say that this client intake form is not done manually or is not sent to them, but the next phase of it is client portal. And just simply add in the client's information, their email ID, a secret key, generate the link, and ask them to fill it out for you. Send, submit it online, and then when you submit it online, we get a referral. And as in your, your, uh, you will be getting an email from you. Uh, when you in turn, you can click on the link and start using the, you know. Um, you can start creating the file. So let me just do this for you. Um, now let's assume that um, a client's email ID is being entered here. And you're entering the password, which is what you provided in the settings already. You can also select and copy the link and send them manually. Now your client receives an email like this. You start here. Your client starts entering information. Once your client finishes entering information, get to know what is the information about the matter. A traffic ticket, how did you hear about us through friend? What kind of pull ID? I'm obviously giving my driver's license. My email ID. So yes, you and is your client. Submit all of it. Your client will get an email, uh, sorry, you will get an email from you and your client will get a picture in front of them saying thank you for submitting this. And once it's done, you can just go back, click on the email that we've got, confirm everything, then you can go back into your log, simply click on reload button, reload browser, or just click on contacts again, and you'll be able to enter all of this information. You have to enter it manually, but you would see that whatever your client submitted online, George, Nick, Okay, there's one charge Nick here, and all of the information is exactly matching to what I entered now. So before I proceed, remember the client intake service and communication that we spoke about doing the conflict check. You know, here's where you do that. Simply click on action, conflict check.
So this is the conflict check. Now uh, you would see the first name conflicts, the last name conflicts, the first name, similar sounding names. Uh, quite a few probabilities that you know would end up giving you conflicts. And if you don't see uh, the same one here, you just simply have to go ahead and start creating a file. Now in this case, there's nothing that matches completely, so I'll click on matter and start creating the file over here. Okay, and over here, I enter the data. Select the area of practice, so if there's a code file number, any matter description. Your hourly rate. If you have an assistant, default tax data saved. All right. Now the matter is being created. The first thing that would come to your mind to do is to make sure you can click on compliance. If you're trying to get a retainer, please send them a retainer agreement, asking them to provide you with a retainer. Okay, so let's say that the retailer letter was done with the amount that needs to be get provided. Once that's with you or you have received it, please go into disbursements retainer, enter the retainer received with the method of payment. And received from. You can also give them a receipt and apply. Okay, now that's the receipt. Upon be receiving the retainer, you be showed it to your client. You go back and click on new retainer, enter the retainer. Provide with the receipt and apply. Now, both the times you have entered your retainer, so far you've received a $1,000 retainer. I'm going to click on matter events, enter event title. Now, this is where you're going to dock it, all your work. So let's say you first met with a client, and then you have some work done, probably all sorted with the court. Now here, you're gonna work on the time. Let's say the document drafting took about two hours. Court hearing took about an hour. And saved. Upon saving your matter events or dockets, you won't be able to raise an invoice. So please click on invoice. Complete. Now to skip review, click on invoice. Okay. 
have that same voice. They are different themes and formats. Um, you can choose if one mode is available there in New York. Um, so one of the few things that law society likes to see is definitely the invoice number. Um, you know, the dockets. Client details under the invoice to completely. Is there any disbursements in the subsequent pages? And what does the client owe you? Or if there's any balance in trust, you'll probably have to show it to the client and do the needful to return it to them or to keep it for the next upcoming bill. Now, um, let's say you have a small disbursement. I actually wanted to include it in my previous invoice, but I missed it. So let me just add it here. So when you're going to add a new disbursement, there are different ways in which you can, or a, a different types of disbursement. You could do a disbursement directly from the trust. You can do it from the general. If you're doing it from the general, what kind of disbursement is it? Is it a, is it gas or is it like photocopies or is it something else? Um, you have to make sure, like you know, you're going to enter them here appropriately. So let's say for now you just have some photocopies. So pay this person is from general cash at the accounts. You're going to charge your client for photocopies, 20 bucks. And you're also going to enter the bottom portion. Pay for it. Now, the bottom portion is called as report expense. Now, this is where a little bit of financial accounting also plays a role or comes into picture. Now, you have the top portion, which is what you're filling out to show your client that, hey, I spent on photocopies about $20 plus taxes. And you're also reporting expenses, say you spent that $20 on behalf of your client and you're entering it into your books. Now, let's say you didn't spend anything. You're going to leave this blank because you didn't spend anything at all for this particular client because you used your office printer. Then what about the paper and ink that comes under your office expenses? Okay, so let's say I leave the bottom portion empty because let's say this year we come and you are going to be able to enter all of those expenses under particular report expense and you're going to be able to see that under the accounts under balance sheet or under trial balance over there. So let me show you an example for both. So when it's there and when it's not there. So when it's there, so let's do one here with the expense, save it. It's going out of your general account, just an example. I also want to show you one without the bottom portion. Okay, so let's say this one is for some System leave the modern portion. Maybe I can just call it as admin. Right. So now I want to show you how it when this year comes to an end, how um, when you're looking at the financials, how you, it's going to you know reflect under the specific reports. So let me first raise an invoice. I'm going to click on invoice, complete it. So upon completing the invoice, one thing you have to keep in mind is to issue the invoice to the client so that they know um, what they're entitled to pay you or if there's anything that's uh, pending in the trust, you're going to send it back to them. So look at it. You have the disbursements both entered here. But when you go into the accounts, you would actually see only one of the disbursements under the general account and not both because only for one you have entered the bottom portion, which was, I think, photocopies, if I'm not wrong. And that's what you see here. Now, let's say if I go into compliance and I do general disbursement for just today's date. And that's what it is. All right. I just want to take a quick pause here. 
Catherine, do you think you or your students have any questions? I don't see anything on the chat window. I'm assuming that so far things look good. Okay. Um, any questions? Catherine? We don't have any questions here, Gassery. Um, All right. Um, anything in specific that you want me to repeat or you want me to go over once again, like, you know, or maybe stress about anything over here at all? No, I think we're okay. Everybody feel comfortable? Yep. No, I think we're okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so other than this that comes to my mind is, uh, you know, these receipts that Law Society definitely want you to provide a client every time you receive a retainer or a client payment or, you know, you know, maybe like even provide your client with the compliance documents such as statement of accuracy, settlement statement, summary, all of these are available under compliances readily. So all that you need to do is simply having to provide your client with these statements on a regular basis. Once you're done with that, you go into your accounts and here we have a set of ad expense payment. This is where you do most of your other expenses that's being recorded. Let's say you have office expenses currently, and you just need to be able to enter the office expense. Click on ad expense payment, office expenses, photocopies, printing stationery, maybe. You want to add in printing paper. So these are office expenses. So you can just randomly add them as you incur the expenses. There are other ways to do it. You can also connect your bank, save time. Um, just showing you the little old school method here. Total added after taxes so that you get the pre tax amount, or you can do YC versa too. You can enter who is it paid to. What was the method? Enter the reference number. Submit it. Now that was for general account uh, expenditure that had that you had in good. Now let's say for an instance your credit card was connected. You had connected connected the bank. So okay, it's probably not connected. Uh, I might want to skip this part, but let me tell you that there's a facility where you can connect your bank. And once your bank is connected, you'd be able to simply click on import bank statement, connect, click on connect bank, choose the respective bank account, of course. And once you click on connect bank, you'll see a bunch of transactions coming up. And all that you have to do is simply take action to add expenses into the account. Unfortunately, my banks are not connected, uh, so I'm not able to show you all how the um, bank connect feature works. But like I said, you can click on action, go to administrator, connect your bank. Once you click on these icons, respective banks are connected. And then you come into import bank statements, click on the respective bank account, either the general or the credit card, and then and click on connect bank and you will see all the information coming up for you to take action. About everything practice management, you also can connect to your calendar where you have all of those information entered in here and synced easily. So just go into your calendar in your box and you're also going to be able to click on calendar. Over here, you have 
in Canada. You can sign in with your Google. And once that's done, you can sign in with Google. You can add in all your dockets. Let's say now for the matter that I was working on, George Nick, you clicked on probably for the upcoming hearing date on Feb 1st. I'd say court hearing. And I would add it to the matter. I would look for Josh Nick. That was the matter that I was working on. And I would say save it. So it's first of February when I go into the matter. You'd actually see a new docket that shows court hearing. And when you think the calendar, the same one will show up here as well which is easier for you to understand how the day can be planned. <laughs> and last but not the least, the analytics part is where you're going to be able to see all of those highlights. Uh, like I said, it's not only always for law society compliances. There's also for your own benefit, for your own um, you know, requirement. Maybe I'll do today's revenue. You'll see if I had raised the invoice, what was the income statement. If I did some expenses, so you can also see the printing paper and all of those that shows up. And you know, whatever was the profit or loss today, you'll be able to see that profit was the matter because obviously you have more revenue, expense was less. And you also have all of those entered as an office expense or client expense relatively, and you'll be able to <clears throat> move forward with it. Now, I think that's most of it to do with everything practice management. I think when you when it comes to everything practice management, what is most important is the obligations that you need to fulfill. The obligations that you need to fulfill um, definitely starts off, like I said, with a client intake, and it goes on till you complete, um, you know, maybe your compliances for law society, which includes bank reconciliation statements and other, you know, other uh, ledgers and journals that needs to be also taken care of. Now. I'd like to continue on to law society compliances, which is also part of today's topic, which is actually the, you know, it comprises, the everything practice management does comprise a little bit of bookkeeping compliances or law society bookkeeping compliances. Uh, now, um, let's say as part of everything practice management, there was uh, financial management where you would have to raise invoices before transferring money from trustworthy general and uh, which is what I had actually done here where you know I had raised the invoice but I particularly did not transfer the money because I wanted to show you that once you've completed the invoice you can click on question mark which is right in the center of the page gives you matter analytics now it tells you clearly that Hey, you have a deposit of $1,000 in the trust account. You have raised an invoice for $1,031.35. So for which, please move the $1,000 that's available in the trust first. Um, of course, you're going to raise invoice, send it to your client, let them know that you're transferring the money that's lying in the trust account, and uh, enter the method of payment that you transferred or um, and also the reference numbers and other things. Uh, we might want to make sure everything is very precisely done so that, you know, in future, if you're going to be audited, you have all the documents handy with you. Now, this is Form 90. As part of Law Society Compliance, again, you need to make sure every time you move money from trust account to the general account electronically, this is to be 
generated, keeping in mind the details all entered here automatically. And last we also have the details of the client and the file number with the thing entered in here. Once that's done, we can go back in here. Good accounts, enter all of the compliance documents for this particular client for today's date, especially. So let me take, like I said, I'm doing one end to end example. So even though I've moved to the next topic, which is law society compliances, I want to use today's example to show you all the document that we worked on. So let's say I'm going to download. These are there are a set of documents that Law Society would like to see for financial management. Now we are doing that part uh, where you know you will have to submit a set of documents to Law Society when it comes to only financial management. We'll we'll go back to matter management and client management later. But <clears throat> under financial management, let's say in clients trust for today's date. Uh, I worked on only one matter, which was George Schnick. For George Schnick, it will show you how much retainer you've collected, how much you've transferred, how much you've invoiced. Everything is seen here. Um, now, the identity, uh, your trust account, you have nothing to refund your client or anything. It's all empty. You moved it all from trust to be general. So you could. And that's about trust ledger. General ledger shows you how much you have invested, how much, <clears throat> sorry, how much you've invoiced, how much you have probably gotten from trust account, and how much you are yet to receive into the general account. This is what is called balance owed. Balance owed. So your client owes you 3135 is balance. You have invoiced your client. 1031.35, which is nothing but your legal fee, your disbursements for photocopy, your disbursement for admin fee, and the amount of was transferred from trust account to the general account. And the balance that is owed to your client. This is what is seen in the ledger. And then goes on journal. Journal is more drilled down version of ledger. So obviously, ledger shows both receipts and payments under one for trust, both receipts and payment under one for general. However, when you go into journal, you get to see both. Okay, and now let's say you want to randomly see client how much they paid into a trust. So I think it's about 500 plus 500. Those are plus clients' trust payments and all your invoiced amount, totally thousand dollars, is over here. <coughs> now, um, one thing that I'd like to probably bring to your attention is that um, now, why are we doing all of this? First of all, why am I generating these documents? Now, I'm showing you that EULA has law society compliance documents for financial management, for matter management, under analytics, under calendar, under contacts, but why are we even doing it? As you can see on the top, that says law society compliance documents. Um, it's um, absolutely um, necessary for you to be keeping in mind that um, LSO rather I mean, if you are from Ontario, Law Society of Ontario, compliance documents are necessary for you because if you're going to be audited or if you are also needing to submit your annual report, you need to make sure that you are on top of everything, you are aware about it. Um, 